Welcome or welcome back, I'm that one Unity dev, and in today's video I'll be showing you what I've been up to with this unnamed wave project. In case you're new here, I'm currently working on a wave based RPG game. It's really early in development, and although it's shaping up well, I've barely scratched the surface of what I plan on implementing. Now that you're all caught up, let's talk about the spells and abilities for a second, which for now, I'll just abbreviate the spells. Last time, you might have noticed the simple combat from before. This is not how I want it to look in the final game. In fact, this fire punch is just one of the many spells I plan on adding. Since it's such a large part of the game, I decided it was better to get an early start on creating the spell system. After a long, headache-filled few days, I had something I was happy with. I created an easy to expand upon system complete with the hotbar, stats, and everything. There was one problem though. I didn't have any spells to collect. So I went to work and made the fire punch an actual spell. And then I created two new ones. A fireball spell, and an ice armor spell. For the fireball spell, it was pretty straightforward. It's just a projectile that deals damage when it hits an enemy. As for the ice armor, when cast, it summons 4 ice crystals that rotate around the player and absorb 1 hit each. Now, if this spell seems a little OP, that's because it is, so I put a massive mana cost and cooldown on it. After that was done, I quickly realized I have no way to obtain any of these new spells, so I made this little spell orb. Each spell orb has a unique icon, and when you collect it, it gives you the spell inside. With the spell system more fleshed out, I thought it'd be a good time to work on something different. So, I added a stat menu, which you can open and close by hitting C. I then used my big brain, this big brain time, and realized I just made the spell orbs so I could repurpose them and make orbs that permanently increase specific stats. Speaking of stats, something you may have noticed is that I haven't shown enemies hurting the player. That's because they currently deal no damage. So, I made them hurt you and also added a death animation. After losing at my own game, I started on a shop system. You can't have a shop without a shopkeeper, so I embraced my inner weeb and made this cute bunny girl for the merchant. Then I made a carpet so her feet don't get cold. Next I added random spell orbs to spawn, assigned a price to each spell, and made some minor revisions to the spell orbs to display those prices, and I ended up with this bad boy. You can now use the currency you collect from killing monsters to buy spells, and when bought, they go into your hotbar. Now it was time to implement the shop into the actual gameplay. I originally had the shop pop up in the middle of the room with a button you can hit to start the next wave, but it didn't quite look right, and not to mention if you stood on the spot where things were coming up in, you would get stuck. So I had an idea. I decided to make the shop its own separate area and give players access to it between each wave. I created a detached room and this cool little altar which teleports you. After playtesting, I found this to be way better, and with the added benefit of opening up options to add other types of merchants, secrets, and anything else in that little upgrade area. But that's all I have for this dev vlog. I'm really happy with the progress so far, and we actually got the core gameplay loop finished. So now, I can just focus on adding new spells, enemies, and gameplay features. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you want to keep up with the game, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't, and if you have any ideas, you can always join the Discord or leave a comment. Tell me what you want me to add next.